Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, look us up in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just shoot some quick thoughts before I get to the Kubrat Pulev versus Tony Thompson fight. First, there's a rumor going around that Amir Khan is going to fight Devin Alexander on December 7th. Now, I haven't looked at film of either of them recently, but my gut, my first impression tells me that Devin Alexander should have the upper hand in that fight. I think the two guys are different. Understand both have hand speed. But in my opinion, Amir Khan is more formulaic, right? He's a guy who has to think a bit in the ring, right? While he has hand speed, and while he can move when he needs to, I don't think he fights as fast as Devin Alexander can fight, right? Alexander's movement literally made his fight against Marcus Maidana a walk in the park, right? The Amir Khan I saw, now that Khan's with Virgil Hunter, was thinking way too much in his fight against Diaz, right? He even gets dropped in that fight. Looks like since he left Freddie Roach, he's gotten away from some of the movement. I believe he's going to need movement to keep up with Devin Alexander. I'll make a further video and think it through a little bit, but first impressions do matter. And my first impression is that Devin Alexander should have the upper hand in that fight. Of course, you need to hedge the play with Khan by KO. Khan is simply put an offensive juggernaut. Let me also switch gears a bit. Johnny Gonzalez against Abner Maris. I have a video up here already. But now I'm finding out that these two guys have sparred in the past. Right? Both guys were represented at the time by Nacho Beristain, one of the very best trainers in the entire sport. Right? When you think of Nacho Beristain, you need to think of him the way you would think of Emmanuel Stewart. Same type trainer. Right? When you see guys like that in the corner even when you don't know who the fighter is you need to think about placing a bet on that fighter because if Nacho likes the fighter then that fighter has to have some good things going on while Johnny Gonzalez was a big time stud three four years ago when these guys sparred you can imagine he was big brother Abner Maris who is now dominant was little brother at the time you need to be aware of that you also be, need to be aware of the fact that you know Nacho Beristain is still in Gonzalez's corner now given the ages of the fighters I gotta tell you I don't believe Nacho Beristain or Johnny Gonzalez would take this fight if they weren't firmly convinced that they knew what Abner Maris was bringing to the party and they could beat Abner Maris. Let me also say too that big brothers do have an ongoing psychological advantage in my opinion over little brothers right because they just think they're the older more experienced player. So one man's opinion and you can read into this with the glitch goes too. But I just feel that the fact that Johnny Gonzalez has always been the alpha between these two is going to make it tough for Abner Maris on fight night. I know Las Vegas disagrees with me, so it goes. Let me jump around a little bit. David Hay, in preparing for Tyson Fury, a fight that I think could end in a Fury win. Apparently has Deontay Wilder as one of his sparring partners. He also apparently has Marius Walk as another one of his sparring partners. Now while both guys are tall, just like Tyson Fury is tall, I'm here to tell you neither of these guys is Tyson Fury, right? 
Deontay Wilder uses his legs for defense. He likes to operate from the outside. Tyson Fury is a guy who can get in your chest and block shots up close, right? Look at the Derek Chisora film, right? Marius Watt, let's just put it this way. His hand speed, in my opinion, isn't Tyson Fury's. Now, I know training camp is not the same as being in the ring, but you need to realize that the more difficult it is to prepare for an opponent, the bigger the advantage the opponent has, right? It's very hard. To find big men with the skill set of Tyson Fury. These two guys, in my opinion, don't have it, nor does Richard Towers, etc. Of course, there's a corollary. It's very hard to find a guy who's as fast and speed is part of his game, who's as fast and hits as hard and is as sudden as David Hay. So that's a fight I can't wait for. It is interesting to see who these guys are bringing into their camp. Steve Cunningham, by the way, is helping Tyson Fury prepare for this fight. That's going to be a mega fight. Keep an eye on that. Let's talk about Pulev against Tony Thompson. Now, this fight is dangerous. I mean, very dangerous. Let's talk about the players. One guy is the better athlete has some of the best legs in the heavyweight division. Moves around the ring much better, and I mean much better, than, let's say, a David Price. Has one of the division's better jabs. Has hand speed. Can even lean in and drop a straight right hand. But he lacks big-time punching power. Right? He's a guy who beats you through death by a thousand cuts. He's the opposite of David Hay. Right? David Hay hits you, you're on the canvas, you're hurt. The ref's at seven, you're wondering whether it's even worth continuing. When Kubrat Pulev hits you, you're annoyed. You're not on the canvas. You're getting battered, but you're standing up. Right? He's embarrassing you more then he's punishing you. Now contrast that with his opponent. Not the athlete Pulev is, but actually the harder puncher. Right? Savvy. Poker players get it. You sit at a poker table, you look around, guys are showing up, haven't shaved for days. If you're really unlucky, they haven't bathed for days. They're wearing crazy outfits, right? You know, some are looking hungover, some are looking alert, some are looking innocent, some are looking savvy. But poker players know it's all a charade, it's all a game. The only thing that matters are the skills. Guys are showing up deliberately looking like they don't know what they're doing. And of course, they're bringing 95 mile an hour fastballs to the table. Well, guess what? That's the way it is with Tony Thompson. He's only lost to one man recently. Look at his history. Most of his fights have ended by stoppage. Go before his fights with David Price. You're going to see that he was knocking out contenders. Let me also say that few guys in the sport know how to dodge a jab better than Tony Thompson. Right? Thompson also is mentally tough. Forget the second Vladimir Klitschko rematch. I'll agree Thompson caved mentally in that fight, but understand Vladimir Klitschko is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport, right? Look at Thompson in the David Price rematch. David Price, for all of his faults, is a heavy puncher. Thompson hits the canvas. The fight is in the UK. David Price is neck of the woods. Thompson gets off the canvas, goes on to win that fight by stoppage. Understand, both of those prize fights were in the UK. If you want to see a man, look at a fighter who will fight another guy in his country and will deliver. That's who Tony Thompson is, right? If this fight were even money, 
if the odds were even for both, I wouldn't touch this fight. I'd certainly watch the fight. But I wouldn't touch this fight. Pulev is much more mobile than Price. Thompson might not be able to catch up with him. Right? On the flip side, Pulev hasn't fought a southpaw for years. Right? Pulev also has had a problem with southpaws. Go back to his amateur career, and yes, I look at a fighter's amateur career in preparing for fights. You're going to see that there is a fighter, Roberto Camaril. Now, he's obviously an elite amateur, but this southpaw has beaten Kubrat Pulev three times. Three times. Then, of course, Pulev starts his pro career. I believe he fights a southpaw in maybe a second or third fight. Then everyone is right-handed. Now, understand, when you are as good with the jab as Kubrat Pulev, what do you do when you're fighting a southpaw who can take that jab away from you? Right? Also, Tony Thompson is more skilled and talented. What that means is that he's a thinking man's fighter. He's always coming in on angles. He knows how to fight off his front foot. Watch him in close. He has a bunch of punches that he tries until he finds the key to your lock. Against David Price, he started throwing a nice short uppercut inside. Tony Thompson can fight inside. I'm not sure if Kubrat Pulev can. If this is an even fight and the odds always matter, I'm on the sidelines. Because I'm getting greater than 3 to 1 odds on Tony Thompson in this fight. I like Tony Thompson to win the fight. Here's where it gets dangerous. The fight's in Germany. Right? Understand that the judges are almost certain. In fact, forget the judges for a minute. The crowd, the culture in Germany, loves precision. They appreciate a guy who can move and operate behind a jab. Just look at the guys ruling the roost in Germany. Right? Um, Sebastian Sylvester, Felix Sturm, right? Germans love a guy who can shoot a jab like a piston and who can bounce around the ring. When you look at the two guys, how they move, right? Kubrat Pulov is going to look like he's moving much more graciously than Tony Thompson. So just understand the risk. Right? Pulev is fighting really in his backyard. He's not German, but he's been fighting out of Germany. Right? The crowd knows Pulev more than it knows Tony Thompson. Right? So my play here is Tony Thompson to win the fight. I'm not sure if you can hedge it. If I were to hedge it, I would take Pulev by decision on the other side of the hedge. But just be aware of the fact that Thompson, believe it or not, as mild-mannered as he is, is really a knockout puncher. And it is a little disturbing to me that in the first Klitschko fight, Thompson faded late. Thompson claims he had a leg injury going into the fight and shouldn't have fought the fight, but wasn't going to pass up an opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship. It was his first time doing so. I can't blame him. Heavyweight championship opportunities don't come every day. Right? But just understand, Thompson's in his 40s now. If you have a question about Thompson's stamina, now's the time to ask it because he's fighting a fast guy. Not so much with his hands, but with his feet. Who conceivably could have the better stamina late. Now, all of that said, I'm expecting Thompson to try to cut off the ring to get in Pulev's chest 
I like Tony Thompson in this fight. It's a high-risk play. I would not be taking Thompson. If he wasn't a 3.25 to 1 underdog. I'm going with the underdog on foreign soil. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for us here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me just say this too. This is a much more difficult fight for Thompson than the David Price fights were. Right? Keep in mind that first Price fight, I believe Price was something like a 7 to 1 favorite. I'm here to tell you that sometimes the bookmakers don't know what they're doing when it comes to boxing. Right? This is a much more difficult fight for Tony Thompson, even though it's shorter odds than either David Price fight. Right? Thompson's going to have to find Kubrat Pulev. But my point is simply this. When he finds Pulev, when he negates Pulev's jab, when he gets close to Pulev, What's Pulev going to do? There is an outside shot that Tony Thompson actually delivers on his promise to win this fight by knockout. Right? So I'm leaning toward Tony Thompson here. Thompson may need the knockout if he's going to come home with the nod in a fight against Pulev in Germany. Just be aware of the politics. I'm going with the underdog, Tony Thompson. And gambling, if you're going to make money, there are going to be times when you're going to have to swim against public opinion. I'm rolling with Tony Thompson once again. Thanks for stopping by.